I just want you to look at the faces of these smug people. These people are condescending. If there was the... I guess the way I'd put it is that these people are the epitome of condescending. Just look at his face. Look at his face. Look at her face. Which, really pay attention to her face. It gets even worse. Look at her face. You know why these people are mocking you? Well, these people on this MSNBC panel are mocking you. Are, give, are pretentious. Because you might oppose lockdowns. Because you might consider more than just survival of COVID-19. In your life. Because you don't view COVID-19 as this perpetual boogeyman. That is the only thing you have to worry about in your multifaceted life. Because as we all know, the only thing you can care about in life is COVID-19. If everything you do doesn't concern the Mandela virus. Well, (laughs) you are anti-science. Buzzword. Buzzword. Anti-Republican buzzword. And you lack common sense. Of course, you know, these people, they are the epitome of common sense. Common sense is so common here that you would get tired of having common sense. So, do you want to know how bad this video is going to be? We'll look at the like to dislike ratio. And now this came out on March 5th, so I am a little bit late. But I really had to think this over because this was one of the most frustrating things I ever watched. Well, this person agrees with me. This girl is so dramatic with her facial expressions. I'm going to guess he's talking about her. Just wait. Just wait. Well, let's dive right in. Well, I mean, you know, survival actually is an explanation that some of us can tolerate, but it really doesn't put food on the table or allow people to pay bills, which is part of the problem. Uh, Speaking of sort of resistance against common sense, so what we've seen is a strange phenomenon, I think, with a lot of Republicans and certainly Republican governors in the face of COVID. If any of you have ever gone through the challenges of trying to lose weight, the moment you look at that scale and you've lost five pounds does not mean it's time to go to Dunkin' Donuts. And yet, you have a lot of Republican governors who've decided that now that we sort of flatline with COVID, we can open everything up. You know, Juanita, when we're seeing this in Texas, when we're seeing this in Mississippi, is this just indicative of these these governors saying, all right, look, we got to reopen the economy because after a year of this, people are starving? Or is it just a manifestation of them always doubting science and not knowing how to properly lose weight? I literally think they're thinking, what would Trump do in this scenario? because I know a lot of the Republicans in my state trust him, follow him, believe him, and they're playing into that hand. And let's be real, that's a very stupid question when you're responsible for protecting people who live in your state. They're absolutely acting in a criminal way, frankly, that does not see their constituents' humanity, does not see their or value of their lives, and it's dangerous. What, what, while it might have some political response to the Republicans in their state, ultimately is causing harm, especially in a state where Texas, where they're just getting over a storm, where thousands probably still have boil water orders because they don't have access to clean water, and now this... Now, this just so the governor can say at CPAC, hey, my state's an oasis of freedom, just like Florida. Like, is that it? Literally, that's what he's exchanging in in return for people's safety in their lives. And it's very dangerous. It's reckless and honestly criminal. We're going to stay. Okay. (laughs) Oh, what can I say about that? There is a lot to unpack there, but I hope that comment that that person made and as i pointed out earlier her facial expressions were just so ridiculous my goodness um it'll get worse just wait just wait (laughs) all right so there's a lot to tackle there where do i start well so he said the resistance of common sense because as we all know it's only common sense that when you live a complex life when there it's a multifaceted phenomenon to be a human being when there's many variables to consider. It's only common sense to focus on nothing but COVID deaths. There's nothing else that could affect your mental or physical health, which could, I don't know, affect your quality of life. There's nothing about economics to consider as it relates to your standard of living, which, you know, isn't related anyway in uh, your quality of life and your chances at survival. 
And real quick, I just want to talk about the weight loss analogy. Yeah, because reopening the country after you've flattened the curve after, I don't know, over a year is really the same thing as uh, losing five pounds and deciding to go to Dunkin' Donuts. There is no health benefit of binge eating Dunkin' Donuts. Sure, there's a health benefit of maybe treating yourself to some Dunkin' Donuts for um, happiness, but these are hardly the same things. Reopening the economy is a net benefit for your quality of life, for your standard of living, for the resources that you have to respond to a viral outbreak. So that really goes back to this sort of resistance of common sense. No, resistance of common sense is being anti-science in the form of being anti-economics, okay? Economics is a social science. And sure, you can make an argument that a social science isn't as old or as refined as hard sciences. And fine, I accept that. That's true. 100% true. But it's still anti-science to not consider economics. To these people, economics is simply just the stock market and GDP, which, in reality, GDP doesn't tell you a whole lot. It tells you how much the government spends. It doesn't tell you the wages. It doesn't tell you how much money is saved. It doesn't tell you how many businesses are created. No, it's just a measurement of how much money is being spent, which includes government money. And we should all know that the government spending money versus people spending money uh, is entirely different. And this notion that this crazy, insane lunatic right here thinks that people considering lifting lockdown restrictions are asking, what would Trump do? Okay, um, <laughs> how insane is that? There's nothing else these people are considering? Like, I don't know, uh, what's my future quality standard of living going to be like? What am I leaving behind for my kids? What am I leaving behind for my grandchildren? What are the consequences of this lockdown as it relates to mental health? You know, is my uh, daughter going to commit suicide? Is my brother going to commit suicide? Is my mother going to commit suicide? Are my cousins going to commit suicide? Are my best friends going to commit suicide? What about these people who haven't, who are living in a perpetual state of fear who haven't received any vitamin D from the sun. Yeah, the only thing these people are considering is what would Trump do? Trump is living rent-free in the minds of these lunatics who suffer from what appears to be Trump a derangement system. But let's move on down the list of what else would brought up. So they brought up how Texas just went through a storm. Some of them are still on boil water orders. Um so here's a fact, uh, you need resources to reconstruct after natural disasters. You need an amount of stored wealth to respond to situations that drastically hinder your normal standard of living that you are used to. Um, and when you're in a lockdown where you shut down a significant portion of the economy, where a lot of people are out of work, where wealth is being squandered, uh, yeah, that will, let's just say, prolong the devastating effects of um, unusual weather phenomenon. Um, that will increase the, the deleterious consequences of natural disasters when you have squandered your wealth, your patience, and your energy only caring about COVID-19 deaths. Healthy economies, prosperous economies, are much more equipped to respond to setbacks. But this person, of course, won't consider it. These people are such fucking idiots. <laughs> I hate I hate to be rude like this, but they're such fucking morons that they cannot distinguish between currency, aka money, and actual wealth. These are different. And then the fact that they mock the idea of my freedom. Uh, it's interesting that she talked about the humanity of people. Um, people have rights. 
And to deny people rights is to deny their humanity. So you can go ahead and mock the idea of freedom all you want, but it is an important thing to consider. In Texas for a minute, Dr. DeFrancisco Soto. So, uh, you know, in order to avoid, I guess, discussing the power outages, in order to avoid this, apparently the mismanagement of COVID, you now have Governor Abbott saying, hey, look, the reason COVID is spreading so much in the state is because of immigrants. All of these diseased immigrants coming across the border. Uh, my question to you first is, does Okay, first of all, that's a misrepresentation of what he said. He's not saying the reason why we have so much COVID spread is because of illegal immigrants who are being released with COVID-19. But he is saying that there is a bit of a problem with the way this immigration policy is. Um, so you, this person, these uh, supposed expert panelists on what is supposed to be an expert analysis on what is supposed to be a reputable news source... We'll spin this as Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, who I do not like, but they are going to spin this in the most negative connotation possible. So what is the claim that he's making? Well, he's simply saying that uh, immigrants have been recklessly released into populations who might otherwise be healthy. They might be spreading COVID. What you didn't actually see was the reason why COVID-19 is spreading is because of illegal immigrants. But let's tackle this sort of idea. So this guy, of course, uh, the panelists, the supposedly expert panelists, are going to mock this idea. Even Snopes is going to say that this uh, claim is unproven. Although, interestingly enough, they'll go down here and they'll cite the NBC article that Greg Abbott was talking about, where 6.3% um, of the migrants, migrants tested were confirmed to have coronavirus. So this is about 108 tests uh, since January 25th, who have been released. And apparently the policy is that after they have been released... That they are tested after they've been released. Meaning, they could be walking around with COVID right now. Now, this is a legitimate concern. Even though it's only 108. Because these people... Remember, these panelists right here... Everything these up. are the ones... These are the people telling you to be in perpetual fear. These are people telling you that you need to social distance. These are people telling you that uh, anti... Lockdown protests or super spreaders. These are people telling you, you can't live your lives. You can't have freedom. However, illegal immigrants who are not born in this country. Okay, and I'm typically, I'm, I'm more sympathetic to illegal immigrants than uh, most conservatives are. But there is a point that they make exceptions for certain classes of people. Because as we know, remember the peaceful protests that happened over the summer were not super spreaders. But people watching football, the Super Bowl, that was a super spreader event. People defying lockdowns uh, who didn't agree with our political narrative were super spreaders. But, ha, ah, legal immigrants, uh, don't you dare bring that up. That is just silly. So, Snopes said that this claim was unproven, while uh, Statesman.com said that the ruling was mostly False, which is entirely different than unproven. So that's from PolitiFact, but this is being referenced. So what is true is that 108 positive cases have been released. And according to the articles, their only real explanation to debunk that uh, the, the claim about recklessness is that there are policies in place. That's it. That they offer resources to people who have tested positive for COVID. But these are illegal immigrants. They broke the law to get here. And I don't think they should necessarily be punished for that. But come on now. To say it's not reckless. But they're going to mock this idea if you have any concern about unfettered border immigration. But you're upset about these lockdowns. <laughs> these people, that's the way they think. Does anyone believe this? And then second, how dangerous is this kind of rhetoric from the governor of a state to basically condemn large swaths of people as being diseased? 
<laughs> yeah, th because nobody on the left has ever, ever condemned large swaths of people as disease. I mean, it's not like we can find this rhetoric on any other side of the political spectrum at all. This is completely um, outrageous that anybody could think that specific people, broad swaths of people, are diseased. I mean, who could possibly say that? This is just insane. Well, as you know, they don't actually mean it. These people are fucking hypocrites. They are lying sacks of shit. And I I don't think they're hypocrites, and I'll explain later. Well, let me put this in historical context, Jason, because I do think it is important that this is a tried and true trope to scapegoat immigrants. I mean, going back to when the Irish came over and then the, the, the Chinese and then the Southern and Eastern Europeans, you always see this story about immigrants bringing disease, immigrants not being clean. The eugenics movement really flourished, you know, when we saw the waves of immigration coming. So that was not a novel line of attack that Governor Abbott used. However, it is very dangerous when we're seeing the, the, the attacks on immigrant communities. Uh, we're also seeing attacks on Asian American communities related to COVID. There is a hate that is being festered to, towards these folks that are scapegoated, which, in fact, they do not have higher rates of COVID than the general population. The mayor of Brownsville uh, was discussing how those folks that they are testing that are coming out of the facilities are at about 6%, which is about what the state averages here in Texas. But this is very, very dangerous. I mean, look, if you want to be... Okay, now, so... I want to give credit where credit is due. She brings up a point how there is generally anti-immigrant sentiment among uh, what could be considered native populations. Um, uh, yes, uh, that that's normal. There is a... It exists on a spectrum, some uh, more, I guess we could say, bigoted, and then some more legitimate concerns. Um, Yes, sometimes certain countries have diseases that are not found here anymore or are not as common here. So yes, there is a concern when people bring diseases from foreign countries, especially when it's from countries that tend to be more poor, that have lower quality health care, that have lower uh, standards of practice, of medical practice. Yeah, that can be pretty concerning and to downplay COVID-19 is a huge deal when it suits their narrative but when it comes to illegal immigrants ah nothing to worry about let these infected people come over because it's about the state average anyway that's not the point the point is more people can spread the virus which these people very well understand but not when it goes against their agenda there's just so much that I can tackle from because they say so much it's really hard to focus on one thing you kind of have to scatter shot yourself you have to pull things that have just been tossed in the air it's like you throw a deck of cards in the air and you're trying to put the deck back together be an immigration restriction is fine do that knock yourself out but don't start making these false claims because these false claims can very easily spiral into folks getting hurt, folks getting killed, and folks who are some of our most vulnerable populations. Many of these folks are... Yes, folks who belong to vulnerable demographics are at risk from COVID-19 spread, which is not helped when you allow more COVID-19 people infected into your country who were not originally in your country. That is a problem. It doesn't matter if the rate of these infected people is in line with the state average. Because what we're not considering is the illegal immigrants who don't get caught. The illegal immigrants who don't get tested. And even if they were illegal immigrants, and you could test 100% of them, and you released even 6 of them who were infected with COVID-19, that is a potential point of spread. They downplay certain aspects of COVID-19 when it suits their agenda.
asylees that have been waiting for months and months and months on the Mexican side of the border because of the Raymond Mexico policy. So Texas right now, it, 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 it's at a juncture, right, where we have seen the state battered with the power outages. We've seen our economy really altering because of the storm, because of COVID. And now these immigration attacks, it's really something that has me incredibly worried, Chase. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You should know. Uh, so if you were frustrated watching this, I was too. And you're not the only one. 3,000 people are frustrated. Of course, these 859 people that liked it, um, these are probably who are living in the basement or who have been in their house for over a year and haven't seen any sun whatsoever. So my overall general response to this video is that you have a few options, right? You can attempt to actually have a genuine conversation to discuss ideas and understand what it is others believe. Like you could talk to people like this and try to coalesce around the truth, right? Or you have the second option, which I think is becoming even more clear. And I think this notion or my advocation for this is being bolstered. Divorce. Okay, people who have paramount disagreements with each other and um, who can't resolve their issues peacefully or respectfully need to go their separate ways. These people are living in a completely different reality than you. They're concerned about COVID-19. They think um, lifting the lockdown restrictions is a negative, but you know there's nothing to worry about with um, illegal immigrants who m might potentially have COVID-19. Nah, j questioning that is the same thing as being skeptical of the Irish who might have brought over diseases. That's always been a thing. Uh, yes, it's a concern that people who are from poorer countries or people who come in unchecked might be carrying something that uh, might have deleterious consequences. Uh, just because something is a net good doesn't mean it won't have consequences. People with um, convictions, so uh, they won't be subsumed, right? They're going to put their foot down and at some point they're going to cease to acquiesce and we're seeing that with the people who are resisting lockdowns okay these people on this panel they have no consideration for rights they have no idea of universal human rights or at least they pretend not to have an idea of universal human rights yet they can dare to talk about people who governors who are lifting the lockdown restrictions they dare to question how much they believe their constituents have humanity and let's be real clear everything here is politicized so don't let people tell you that all oh, the mask issue has become politicized as soon as so this is sort of a tangent but as soon as a mask mandate is put in place that is something that is politicized now understand that these people's goals despite them talking about it is not to save people's lives okay they give lip service for saving lives but that is just a talking point okay someone concerned about saving lives you know they said oh you know uh, uh caring about survival is good enough for some of us yeah no they don't believe that because somebody who cares about people's lives doesn't censor certain experts they don't mock certain positions and they're willing to listen to experts who have counter opinions to what they have created as a conventional narrative. They don't act as if there's only one thing we consider, which in their minds is COVID-19 deaths. And of course, the second thing you can say that they consider is uh, letting illegal immigrants into the country without restrictions. The economy isn't about the stock market, okay? Like I said before, it at, at its core, at least from the Austrian perspective, which is the perspective I adopt, economics is human action, okay? There's also mental health and physical health that we have to look at. These people, though, they think that you can just print money and give it out to people, and people can keep living on that. Well, here's, here's a fact. If you have 
a geographical location where nobody is working, nobody's creating stuff, but you say, all right, here's a bunch of money. Here's a bunch of paper dollars. Nothing is going to happen. None of these people are going to live more fruitful lives just because you gave them this piece of paper. That's not how the economy works. This is why I stress the point that economics is much more than the stock market. It's much more than the GDP. This is how an economy functions. Different people have different skills that they're good at and they find ways to produce certain products at a much cheaper rate. And then you trade based on stuff that you mutually want or something along those lines. You have somebody who's good at building shelters, you have somebody who's really good at fishing, and then you have somebody else who's really good at making clothes. These are all necessities for human beings. Well, a person will build shelter in exchange for fish, the person will exchange fish for clothes, the person will build shelters for clothes. It, it goes like that. That's an economy. People serve different functions. People do different things things have to be made in order for wealth to be created are you better with a hundred dollars and nothing to spend it on or are you better off with a hundred dollars that can be spent on a bunch of things wealth is the primary concern and it goes beyond just currency these people have no concept of that so i want you to keep all of that in mind i hope you enjoyed this video leave your comments in the comment section down below and have a good one